How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to the homestead. It is January 6th, 2022, and we have a winter storm warning in effect for the next two days. Now, of course, the last winter storm warning that we talked about on the channel turned out to be nothing. A couple cold temperatures, some strong winds, but nothing really to write home about. This one, on the other hand, might give us a whole foot of snow over the next two days. And since we have about two feet of snow on the ground so far, that's picking up 50% more snow than we already have. So that's guaranteeing that I'm going to need to get out and snow plow. I'm definitely going to need to do some shoveling. So we're going to film that, but I also want to talk about the gear that I wear while I snow plow. Because it's not like I'm out in some super arctic winter conditions, but it's cold, it's snowing, you got the wind blowing in your face, so it is pretty chilly, and of course the gear you wear does make a difference. So. After I wake up a little bit, we're going to go down to the shop and talk about that gear and talk about how I snow plow. There's the entrance to the shop. Yeah, we got a little snow out there. Before I hop on the quad and get to work, I wanted to talk about the clothes I wear while I snow plow. Because like I talked about earlier, while I'm not in some serious arctic conditions, it is still snowing, it is still windy, it is still cold, so the gear I wear does matter. Going from head to toe, we're starting off with my beloved wool GI beanies. I talked about these in my surplus store video, and like I mentioned there, I have at least six or seven of these, if not more. I probably have upwards of ten, just stashed throughout my house, inside various bags and kits. These things are great. I love them. Going a little bit lower, we have some snow goggles. These are a must if you're going to plow snow on something that doesn't have a windshield. If you're using something like a quad, you got to have these. You don't want to rely on your safety squints to keep the snow out of your face. And then what happens if you're plowing a path that has some low hanging tree branches like I do? I guarantee you that at least one time per winter, if not one time per plow trip, you're gonna have a tree branch slap you in the face. So unless you go and cut all of the branches along your path out, these might just save your eyes, not just from the snow, but also possibly some tree branches. You can't replace these guys, so take care of them. Then moving on, we have my upper layers, which starts off with my beloved cold weather coat. I talked about it in my surplus store video as well. I love this thing. I wear it as much as I can. Below that, I'm just wearing a t-shirt. And on top of that is some more surplus gear. This is just a raincoat. Um, I think it was about 20 bucks, so very inexpensive. But the reason I wanna have some rain protection, even though it's not raining, is because we're gonna be out there for hours on end plowing. When you're using a quad, it takes some time to do this, especially if you have a lot of space you have to plow. It takes, not considering all the different loops I have to run to get all of it plowed out, I have about three miles worth of plowing to do. So that's quite a bit when you're, once again, not considering the multiple passes I have to make. That's a lot of time, and that's going to allow the snow to eventually melt because our clothes are heating up from our body temperature. So to prevent the snow from soaking me, just have a rain layer on top. And then below, have another rain layer. This is just some rubber coveralls. They're not technically waders because they don't have like connected boots, but rubber coveralls, these things will keep the water off of you. For pants layers, I'm wearing long johns and then just some jeans over those. Pretty simple, but this is what's gonna keep any moisture from soaking me. I really hate having soaking wet blue jeans. I don't know about you guys, especially when it's pretty damn cold out. So this is a lifesaver, just like these are. The last piece of gear besides my socks are my muck boots. And you may ask yourself, why am I wearing my muck boots instead of my JKs? And the reason is because my JKs are so well fit to me that I don't have the ability to put my pants inside the boot without them kind of feeling weird, not fitting quite right. So the muck boots allow me to put my jeans and my long johns inside the boot and then this rubber layer on the outside of the boot. So hopefully no snow is going to get inside and soak our socks. Which, speaking of the socks, I'm not wearing 100% wool socks, but they are a wool blend. And they are the only type of socks that I wear, period. So in case you guys are interested in this specific type of socks I wear, I will insert that right here in the video. I think that covers all the gear. From head to toe, beanie, goggles, rain layer, warmth layer, t-shirt, rubber layer, uh, blue jeans, long johns, muck boots, socks. That's about it. I think it's time to get to work because the snow's starting to pile up 
And that's where we're gonna start talking about our snow plowing tips. I've only been snow plowing for about two years using this quad, or two winters, I should say. But I think I've learned quite a bit, so let's see what I can teach you. The second tip is to angle your plow depending on which direction you want the snow to be pushed. In this first video, it doesn't seem too apparent, but the blade is facing towards the left and is pushing the snow to the left. And in this second video, the blade is facing the right and is pushing the snow to the right. The reason you want to do this is it allows the snow to fly off in either direction rather than all piling up in front of the plow, thus creating more work for the quad. So I've been plowing now for about an hour and a half, and tip number whatever we're on is to be prepared for the unexpected. This is the second time the winch line's broken this season, which means not only do I have to repair it, but I get to show you guys how to repair it. And what happens if this winch line breaks at the back of the property? After your quad gets sideways in a single lane path you've cut because you caught your plow in a deep snow bank. So now your quad is perpendicular to the single lane path that you have, your winch line breaks, which controls your plow going up and down. What do you do? Well, in my case, I didn't film because I had to get myself out. You undo the plow, fight it up onto the snow bank so that you can then just power the quad out like normal. Usually if I get stuck sideways like that, I could just lift the plow and then power out. But if the plow's on the ground, it kind of makes that difficult. So without any further ado, I'm going to stop rambling and get to repairing. For those of you curious, the only tools you need to accomplish this besides the little pieces of hardware is a pair of long needle nose pliers, some master keys, AKA bolt cutters and a hydraulic wire crimping tool. This one I got from Harbor Freight, pretty inexpensive, and this is the only specialty tool that we need. So without any further ado, I need to repair this thing because my driveway still isn't plowed out. Tip number whatever after that one, make sure you focus on the stuff you have to do before you focus on the stuff you want to do. I should have followed my own advice and plowed my driveways out before I plowed the back path. That was my mistake and now I'm paying for it. Let's get to fixing this thing. All right, so this first part is pretty simple. We're gonna turn the quad on. Knock the snow out of here first off. We're gonna try to find our broken winch line, which is right there. Now with any luck, I'm gonna be able to just grab that and pull it straight out of this roller while I'm letting line out of that winch. I may need to cycle the winch a couple times before I can grab that line properly, but that's the idea. So, oh, I got her. Let's see. Okay, so now that I have a firm grasp on the end of the line, I'm gonna start letting line out. You can see the frayed end. And I'm going to let out a pretty good ways. Okay, so I let out probably three feet of line right there. And the reason you want to let out so much line is you want to get to a section that has no burrs, no line that's been tore up at all. You want to get to a section of the cable that is perfectly like brand new basically. So the next thing we're gonna do after we find that section that doesn't have any frayed portions, which I'm gonna say is, we'll say this bend right here. That's not, actually back behind here. Because if the line's crushed, that can also be a little bit of a wear point. So we're gonna go back behind that piece, taking our master key, that's it. Just cut off that frayed portion then you are left with that right there. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna, I don't know the right name for this stuff, so please forgive me. Grab one of these pieces, which is what you feed the wire through and crimp it down. Now you get one of these pieces, which the wire goes through and makes the loop, which is a wire something. Wire rope, let's see if I can pull it off. Wire rope thimble, there you go, that's the official name. So. The way I like to do it, I feed this through first before I even worry about the thimble. So I want to get this pretty well situated. It doesn't have to be perfect. 
but you do want to make sure that you are forcing the cable on the end all the way out. You want to have you don't want to have it all the way to where you have a long string coming out past this point, but you may be able to see right there that I just have a little end sticking out. That's perfect. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our thimble and just kind of size it up. Put it inside that wire, tighten it down, and get it to where it needs to be. Again, doesn't need to be perfect because if you notice, this wire broke not at the point where I fixed this, but way up where it rolls into the winch. So this is not the point that's going to break if you do it right. The line itself is what's going to snap. So keep that in mind. You don't need to do this absolutely perfect. So we're going to just tighten this up the best we can, kind of forcing the line into that thimble. And then once we get to a good point, we're going to take our hydraulic crimping tool and just crimp this line down. It's that simple. So now this is the hardest part of this entire thing. And this is not OSHA approved, ladies and gentlemen, using this wire crimper to crimp this down. Because if we're gonna use the individual pieces, uh, I don't know exactly what they're called, but the different size little things that press down, it's not gonna fit right. So the way I have to do it is lay those on their sides and it does take a little bit of you know, working with it to get it in there just right. But once you set those in there like that, you could just start crimping her down. And hopefully if I do this right, it won't look horrible. So there's the first crimp. You could see that it crushed that wire down pretty good. We're gonna do a second crimp in the back, crimp the ends, call it good to go. Less than a 10 minute repair, just have to have your stuff ready to go. Be ready for the unexpected, ladies and gentlemen. We're right back in the shop, which means I broke something. This time, one of the U-bolts that holds the plow mount to the quad. I was plowing my driveway and one of them snapped off. Now, because the other one was holding on, I was able to drive it back here without having to take the plow off. That's a big plus. Unfortunately, I don't have any new U-bolts. This is an old one that I think I'm gonna be able to use, however. So tip number five, which kind of goes with the last two tips, make sure you have enough spare parts on hand for all of the wear points on your machine. You don't wanna be mid snowstorm and then get snowed in because of one little piece you forgot to stock. This is stupid on my part because I usually keep a ton of these going into winter, but hey, unfortunately, I just didn't think to buy some. So we're going to try to get this guy on there, finish out the plowing, because of course the two neighbors that have legitimate snow plows, whether that be on the front of their truck or their tractor, have decided to not plow the main road, which means I get to do that with my ATV and miniature snow plow. <laughs> I guess it's fun, maybe. <laughs> Let's fix this thing and get back to work. So tip number six is to make spots where you could put the snow once it starts to really pile up. Obviously the first couple times that you plow, you're gonna have no problem just pushing it over to the side by angling that blade. But once it really gets deep, like it is right now, you really need these spots where you could push the snow out of the way and get it out of the path. And to give you an idea of how deep the snow is, the drifts on this path are literally taller than either Sven or Misty. And while Sven isn't too tall, Misty's got a couple extra inches on him, so this is some pretty deep snow.
It's about 2.30 and I just got done plowing the snow, at least the snow that I could plow, and we'll talk about that here in a second. For those of you curious, we started plowing at about 9.30 according to the timestamps of the videos I'm taking, which means we were plowing for roughly five hours. And I say roughly because of course we did have two repairs during that time span and I did take a quick break to go feed my dogs lunch and take them on a run. So roughly five hours. And why did I only plow the snow that I could plow? Why didn't I plow all the snow that I wanted to? Well, it's too deep, I didn't prepare for it, and I made some mistakes. <laughs> Guys, this is a perfect video where you don't learn from what I do in the video, you learn from what I don't do, and my mistakes, and the things I tell you that you should do instead of what I did. As I went around the path trying to plow that, I got about halfway done before it was just too skinny, the edges of the plow kept getting caught on either side, and I said, it's just not worth it. It's not worth fighting the plow, fighting the quad to try and get this cleared out. So now for the rest of the winter, I'm going to be snowshoeing around my property when I take my dogs for a walk. It sucks, but that's the way it goes now. Learn for the future. I was, however, able to plow both of my driveways out. Both of those are totally clear now. However, I was not able to plow the main road for similar reasons to the path that goes around my property. Now, instead of it being that the snow is too deep over on the sides and I can't, you know, plow those over away, the snow just along the road is too deep. And then, of course, the same thing will happen where if I plow, you know, the first path, plow that path, then I plow the edge, then I plow the other edge. That's now just about enough room for one car to pass through. Great. Now what happens to the snow on either side of that path I've created that's now hilled up and I can't push with the quad because it's so tall? What happens then? So rather than trying to fight that snow and fight the tall mounds on either side of the path I would create, I'm also saying I'm not plowing that and I'm leaving that up to my neighbors that I mentioned a little while ago. Sorry guys, get your tractor out, get your truck out. It's your time to go plow some snow. But in all seriousness, I was able to get done the essential stuff. My driveways are clear. My parking areas are clear. That's good news. My neighbors will eventually plow out the road. It is what it is. And of course, walking around my path in snowshoes, not the end of the world. Just got to learn for next year. Got to remember, hey, make some more of those spots to deposit the snow or else you're going to be snowshoeing possibly. With that, you guys, I'm going to go in, get warmed up, have some lunch and enjoy myself for the rest of the day. I was in the process of making dinner and I want to show you guys, these are some of the Yukon Golds that we harvested July 30th, 2021. These guys are over five months out of the ground and they still look great. Yes, some of them are getting a little too soft, getting a little too wrinkled or too far sprouted, but the majority are looking like this, still solid, barely wrinkled, and just a little sprout which means we can plant some of these in the springtime because of the sprouts and we can eat them now because they're still solid, not going green, not soft. Very happy with that. Good morning, everyone. As you guys may be able to tell, it has stopped snowing. We picked up about another six to seven inches last night, so good amount on its own. Unfortunately, it has started raining this morning and pretty good as well. So all that snow is turning into slush and slush is a lot harder to plow, a lot harder to walk in, drive in, everything. Just a nightmare. I'm post holing all the way through this path. It's not fun, you guys. And with that being said, because it's all slush and really nasty now, I don't even know if I'm going to be able to plow my driveways. That's tip number, I think we're on seven at this point. Keep up with the plowing because you never know what tomorrow is going to bring. Might bring rain, might bring a melt, might turn all your snow into slush, and then it just becomes a nightmare to try and plow. So tip number, like I say, six or seven, whatever we're on, make sure you keep up with the snow. Since we already exhausted the wood that was inside that white shed at the top of the hill, we have to get some firewood from the original woodshed, which is basically at the bottom of the hill. Not all the way at the bottom, but pretty close. And being as I can't plow that hill because of all the stuff I mentioned earlier, we have to haul the wood up trip after trip using a plastic sled. 
It's going to suck, but that's what we have to do because I need to keep my house warm. First load, going up. A lot of people think that homesteading and living off-grid is the easy life. Well, here to tell you, the easy life ain't so easy. It's rewarding, but you got to put the work in. Of course, I forgot to film an outro to this video, so here's a video of me taking firewood inside with a narration over top of it. <laughs> Guys, we got about 15 inches of snow over the course of those two days, which, while it's not record-breaking by any means, that's a pretty damn good amount of snow if you ask me. I put a lot of work in on the quad, both snow plowing and repairing the snow plow, and I hope you guys enjoyed those tips that I came up with. Of course, that's not an exhaustive list, and I'm sure there's going to be some tips that pop into my head right after I upload this video, but I think it's enough to help someone like I was a couple years ago who just got a snow plow on their quad get started and not completely fail throughout the winter. If you did enjoy those tips and found them helpful, please consider leaving a like and subscribing if you haven't done so already. Comment if you have any comments or questions and share the video with someone you think also might enjoy it. With that, you guys, thank you for watching. Think for yourself, shoot straight, and I will see you next time.